Thank you, everybody. I hope everyone's had an amazing morning session. Um, we are taking a little break before we have our lunch to have a conversation. I hope you all enjoy this. For those of you who don't know Jonathan, he is a amazing designer, author, potter, entrepreneur, who has now retail stores all over the globe. Most recent one is in London. Uh, he's designed hotels from the Parker in Palm Springs to the Addington right near here, um, as well as the O in Palm Beach. And he is a person who has been inspired and loves travel for a very long time and believes in a sense of place and personality and certainly knows the luxury travel audience. So I thought it would be fun for the two of us to have a conversation. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you for spending some time in this sacred ground. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here, and you guys all look fantastic. <laughs> so I want to start with something that you and I talked about on the podcast, um, which is sort of how you have dis distilled some of your design inspiration, often by, I hope I get this right, quintessentializing a travel period and place through a particular icon. I actually ordered a pair of Jackie O's sunglasses for this event and then I forgot to put them on. Uh, channeling Jackie O, will you talk about this concept of design inspiration and, and how that came about and what it means to you? Sure, uh, when designing a space, especially a hotel, I love to think about a sense of place, most importantly, but also a narrative. And um, so in sort of my day-to-day -day work, I. I often try to imagine a fictitious muse and sort of think what would be in her ideal environment. It's sort of like, I, I think of, and I always think of Jackie O as sort of the pinnacle of jet set glamour and style with you know vintage infused jet set glamour and style, which I think is always a nice place to start. Um, and I imagine, all right, if Jackie O was in Capri, what would she have around her? And so I use that as sort of a, a starting point when I'm designing product. I often send Jackie in my mind to different jet set locations and sort of use that as an inspiration to create her environment. Or in a hotel, like uh, I like to create a sense of narrative. For instance, when we, a slight departure from Jackie O, but when I designed the Parker in Palm Springs, uh, I wanted to quintessentialized the spirit of Palm Springs, and I invented, the name, of the, hotel, the name of the hotel is the Parker, and so I invented a fictitious muse, Mrs. Parker, and I imagined that the hotel was her estate, and that she was sort of this grand dame hostess who was incredibly glamorous, and I wanted the hotel to feel residential, which I think is so important in hotel design now more than ever, and just sort of having Mrs. Parker as my muse, imagining it as her estate was a fantastic way for me and the entire staff and team to create a theatrical environment, um, which is so important in hotel design. So yeah, that sense of narrative and of muse, I think is a really good starting point for design and for hotel design. Thank you. And, and you just mentioned something that I want to touch on. You said you think it's really important for hotels today, in particular, to have a residential feeling. Why do you think that is? I agree with you, but I'm super curious as to where that's coming from and, and why you think it's so important right now. Yeah. It, it, we live in such a sort of corporatized, private equity, um, homogenized world. And increasingly the hotels that I enjoy are see, seem family run, uh, intimate, and residential. Like they don't feel overly corporate, they don't feel too slick. They feel a little bit more homey. And I think that's, that's what I always look for in a hotel and it's a very difficult balance to strike. Um, it requires like a vigilant operator. Yeah. Can you give some examples of places where you feel that and, and you think are succeeding? 
Sure. Uh, well, I was just in Paris, uh, where I stayed at the JK Place, which is incredible. It is so beautiful, but it also has a sense of intimacy, and it's sort of, to me, that's what an ideal residence would be. Um, I also love Soho House. I think they do an incredible job of being sort of a hotel brand that has many, many branches, and yet, I, I don't know how they do it. I do not know how they execute, but whatever Soho House hotel I'm staying at feels residential and intimate and not corporatized. Yeah, and what about ones that have an amazing sense of place? What are some of your favorites that you look to either to stay in or over the years you felt really represent their sense of place properly? That is such an, a, good, a good and important question. I think I, I was just in Capri and I stayed at the Scalinatella, which I think has, I don't know if any of you guys have been there, but uh, it just has such a sense of place and it's not, I mean, I guess it's five star or whatever stars mean, but it's not sort of the grand hotel that people might think of. It's a slightly more intimate hotel, but it captures the dreaminess of Capri. Like it could only be in Capri. And sometimes on like a dark rainy day when my employees are driving me mad, which they always are, I will like just log onto the website and just be like, oh yeah, that exists. <laughs> um, so yeah, the Scalinatella. And then there are hotels, uh, many others that I sort of think of. Again, I think JK Place is, it's not the oldest hotel, but it really captures the sense of place. I think Claridge's in London uh, is another one that really nails it. And I also love um, the Post Ranch Inn in Big Sur. I think a lot of the places that inspire me are singular places, you know, places that are just physically so extraordinary and not generic. And then, and, and ide you know, ideally there is a hotel in that singular place that nails it. And so those are some that capture it for me. Scalatella, JK Place, uh, Claridge's, and... Post Ranch. Post Ranch. Yeah. And and for you, when you're designing a hotel, and we talked a little bit about residential, but what are the things that you think over time have changed and are really important to the luxury traveler today that, that you always bring into a project? Because you do residential projects as well as hotel projects, and they're different. They are. I think, uh, you know, I'm a, this sounds really weird and silly, but I'm a craft person. Like, I am a potter. So that's really how I got my start. And I sort of approach my entire design world through craft. That's like what I do. And so when I am designing a place, I always like to introduce very personal, quirky, crafted items that I have made. Um, and that are kind of, I, I'm a soulless person, but I think that my work, <laughs> in this, in my, I think my work appears soulful. And uh, that's kind of what I strive to um, put into my hotel design, is like a sense of soulfulness and a sense of my personal care, so that it, ideally it feels non-generic. And um, I kind of think it comes through. I think if you go to like the Parker, you'll see that I designed these tapestries that are hand loomed in Peru made of alpaca and I just did sort of quirky personal things like um you know I selected books that are uh, for the rooms that really give a sense of the vintage vibe like Valley of the Dolls and all these different books in the hotel room and I made a lot of pots and so for me yeah I like to I like to create a soulfulness and I think that's I think that's what I kind of um, am troubled by in the world that I previously discussed the corporatization and homogenization. And I think, you know, I, I'm a luxury traveler and I know a lot of luxury travelers and I think they are looking for a bit of soulfulness um, and it's in, in short supply. Yeah. And I'm curious because you travel a lot for business as well as a leisure luxury traveler. Um, there are things, w when you're traveling for those two different purposes, how do you plan your trips differently and what do you look for differently? Good one. I guess uh, for biz, I cheap out a little bit. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I feel I don't, you know, I don't splurge as much on business travel. For um, personal travel, I want it to just be like next level. Um, 
you know, it's pretty basic. But um, yeah, I like a gym. I like all the basic amenities. I need a great pillow and I need somewhere very comfortable to sit and read. Yeah. And when you're thinking about your own travel and what inspires you to, to take a, a personal trip, a leisure trip, what are the things that you're looking for? Is it, are you going back to the same places frequently or are you trying to find something new? And in which case, you know, are there certain themes that you're going after? Um, I, <laughs> I'm a creature of habit. I tend to go to the same places, but I think it's just because everything's gotten difficult and crowded. And so I kind of want to find those great hotels. They can kind of take me places or those, again, singular destinations, you know, so it's not a generic place. I want, I want to go somewhere that just has a true sense of place and feels a little bit frozen in time. Like, give me Madrid over Barcelona. Yeah. And, and we've talked about sort of being able to discover experiences in places. So you as a traveler, when you are in Capri, how much are you, how do you plan your days there? Are you waiting for someone to tell you what to do? Are you completely open for spontaneity? Are there certain um, guidebooks or sources that you use? Um, I just kind of roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not a very, I'm, I'm very lazy and not very organized. So, um, but I do love, I love, again, just having been at the Scala Nutella, there's something about the, the fact the staff has been there forever. Like it's weird. It has some bits that aren't as luxurious as other hotels, but I don't care because it just has that true sense of an owner operated feel. And I think, you know, th as I talk about hotels and as I think about my own business, it's that owner-operated feel that I think is so important and in such short supply. Yeah, and we've talked about value and splurging and things being expensive and the cost of things going up and up and up. And every consumer is thinking, what's worth spending money on? So you think about it both as an entrepreneur but also as a consumer. What are some of the things that you think have changed in terms of the cost of things and the calculation of what's worth spending on? So I don't mind spending a lot if I really feel like I'm getting value. And if I don't, then I'm irate. And this is something <laughs> I think about in my business all day, every day, is price, value, um, equity. Like if something, you know, if something... Yeah, if something's sort of off, you know, if something is like a sweater for $2,000 that doesn't feel, then I'm just, it makes my teeth itch and I feel uncomfortable. Um, whereas if a sweater is 2000 bucks, it better feel like 2000 bloody bucks. Like, and the same applies to travel, I think. So, you know, I don't mind, um, I mean, look, the price have gotten bananas. Um, I don't really mind it if... I really feel like I'm getting it, and if I don't, then I'm irate. And I think that's, um, you know, I think that's a, people can get sort of short-term gains by charging, like based on demand, but I really think it's a long-term bad strategy if you can't back it up. It's what I think about all day. I manufacture stuff, um, and my stuff ain't cheap, it ain't a fortune, but like, I always want there to be a price value correlation that makes sense. Yeah. And in terms of the things that have changed post-COVID, um, good and bad in travel? Uh, bad? No housekeeping. Drives me insane. And again, that's like a price value um, disconnect. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think like everyone else, I'm ready just to like sort of put COVID behind me, pretend it never happened. And um, I just wish hotels would bring back housekeeping all the time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've got a bunch of hoteliers in this room. What else do you wish <laughs> that, that, that they did? Hmm. I mean, get, so, all right, so shout out to Soho House. They do everything right, in my opinion. Like, um, I think you, I think hoteliers would be very well served by just going and staying at a Soho House and sort of experiencing kind of like the amenities, the things in the room. It's just very, very thoughtful. Uh, 
and residential. You know, it's like there's a kettle in the room, there's a comfortable chair, the pillows are perfect. It they haven't put like those horrible pillow covers that don't breathe that stop a down pillow from being a down pillow. Like they just kind of don't cheap out on the residential amenities that I think mean so much. Okay. But we gotta go study Soho House. You kinda do. <laughs> or yeah, Soho House, JK, Le Classique. Yeah. Um, okay, so what's next on your list for for travel in Jonathan's world? Um, well, in my mind's eye, I have been sending Jackie O to Vienna, where I am obsessed with a kind of Viennese early 20th century design, like the Wiener Werkstatt. So I got to get my ass over to Vienna stat, um, <laughs> which again, I think is one of those places. I went there very briefly once, but it's just, it's one of those places that feels a little frozen in time. It remains, it has a singular feel. Uh, and that is more and more what I want in travel, a place that is like nowhere else in the world. Yeah. And what made Vienna pop into your mind for Jackie this time? <laughs> well, the design is singular. I think um, Joseph Hoffman and the Wiener Werkstatt from Vienna are like my go-to sources of inspiration. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's. I keep coming back to the word singular, yeah. but it's very much how I, how I see the world. Um, again, in an era of increased homogenization. It's, I think I and other sort of luxury-oriented travelers are looking for unique places and experiences that can't be replicated and that aren't too crowded. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy I'm going to Christmas to, to Vienna. Oh, nice. Um, so in terms of the luxury consumer, luxury traveler, luxury buyer of your products, how have their habits changed and their demands changed? Well, on a positive note, I guess there's just a lot more of them. You know, mass affluence is fantastic for the luxury uh, market. So props to that. Um, I think they just seem to want like more, more, more. But I don't know. What do you, th what, what do you think is changing in the luxury consumer? Well, I mean, I, th I think there is concern around pricing, um, certainly. Um, but I do think that, that it's the experience and whether the experience is home, which we saw during COVID where people were willing to spend a lot of money on their residences or travel as an experience or food. I think there is definitely um, a movement towards more of that, even more so after COVID than you know, necessarily buying lots of new cars and, and the sort of status symbols? Yes, as a, as a, um, I sell things for a living and luckily business is good, but I'm distraught over the focus on travel. Because um, <laughs> people are, people are spending um, on travel versus buying my beautiful items. So I hope your entire industry falls apart and everyone just <laughs> um, wants to refurnish their homes as they did during COVID. But since that doesn't seem to be happening, um, yeah, I guess just, you know, I, I really like those experiences in which one feels special, that feel intimate, non-generic, non-corporate. Like I even, I was just in London last week and I flew home um, on British Airways first. I got, bounced, like, you know, I normally do business, I got bounced up to first. And OMG, I'm never going back. It was just so <laughs> fantastic. And, you know, as much as I don't want to be a snob or, um, you know, ever want to be one of those people who would ever say, like, do you know who I am? I think I might be a snob who <laughs> is, like, one of those people. Because being treated the way I was treated on BA First Class was like, I don't know if I can give that up. Yeah. Well, I mean, t to the advantage of what you're doing, which is singular craft and custom pieces, I do think there's been a response against homogeneity and the idea of cookie cutter anything, and whether that's a good or a travel experience or even being one of very few in first class, I do think there is that sense that we, we, you know, we all want the personalized. We all want that experience that is not what we think every other person's getting. Exactly, and I think that 
It's funny we're talking about this in the context of uh, travel because I think luxury retail has gotten strangely homogenized and it seems like whenever I go to like a fancy city, I kind of feel like I'm still at Heathrow. It's just everything feels like a duty-free shopping experience. It's the same goddamn stores that all look the same. They're all like, you know, snooty and luxurious and it, but it just feels so samey. You know, it's the, it, it almost feels like why bother traveling when you can just buy the same stuff in the same environments there's like very little sense of discovery. And I think there's a little bit of that in the hospitality industry. Some of the bigger chains, um, I think, deliver a consistent level of product, but not a special level of product. And so for me, I want to find places that manage to hit both notes, like spesh and consistent. Yeah. Yeah, no, I and think, not duty free ish. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. Um, well, I'm happy to open this up to questions because we've got a lot of people in the room who are interested in luxury and travel and design. So um, please, if if anyone's got questions, otherwise I can keep chatting away with Jonathan. Uh, yes, back there. Uh, Is there a color I'm loving and a color I'm hating? Good question. Um, <laughs> My color du jour is a strange color, uh, which is eau de Nile, which is kind of the color of Claridge's. It's that kind of mournful, um, kind of deep mint that is very evocative of England in the 30s. So not to be too like nuanced and niche about it, but <laughs> eau de Nile, um, as in water of the Nile. And uh, you know, mauve is my forever enemy. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Will, I saw you had your hand up. Which JK, by the way, does a really great job with their books. Yeah, they do a great job with their books. But I was at another super fancy hotel recently in Rome. By the way, I sound soups glamorous. I'm not. I'm like a potter um, <laughs> who's moored to his wheel. But I have been on the road a bit lately. Um, I was just at a very fancy hotel in Italy. And like all the books looked right, but the content was off. You know, like they were the wrong titles. Um, so I think it's, I think there needs to be a sort of level of uh, thought and sophistication that is often missing when things are chosen by like junior designers. Like there needs to kind of be, I, I feel like, you know, like sometimes there'll be just like accessories that look like they were bought wherever. And I, you know, I, not to keep giving a shout out to what I did at the Parker, but it's great. And um, every product is like, I think looks right and sends the right message. And so I think that it's really about, have, about being so detail oriented that you make sure that something looks right and communicates something, whether it's um, emotional or just something, you know, as, as I said, like for me putting Valley of the Dolls, the book by Jacqueline Suzanne about, you know, like drugged out um, you know, people in the 60s in LA, it just hit all the right notes. And I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's those extra levels of thoughtfulness and specialness that take an experience to the next level and make it memorable. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And we can all walk into a hotel room and know that the junior designer just ordered inches of books and someone who handpicked what you should be reading in those locations it's totally different you feel it the fingerprints yeah it's the fingerprints yeah sure. anyone have any other questions otherwise i unfortunately i think we're at time anyway oh one last one george well i think with service it's so difficult and i'm i'm a hotel designer, designer, but I also have retail stores, and this is something I struggle with nonstop. My mantra is always um, owner-operated. I think that that is what one should always strive to create the feel of. You know, um, I was at, I'm staying at a hotel now, and um, at breakfast this morning, uh, I asked for milk, and the guy plopped down some cream, and I was like, no milk, and he goes, uh, we don't have that. And I was like, <laughs> bro. If it were owner-operated, 
you would be like, I'm going to get milk for this guy. And I think that um, one just has to be ever vigilant in staffing, hiring. That's what I spend so much of my time doing is trying to create the feeling of an owner-operated space, and that just is a hiring challenge, and it re requires vigilance and being non-corporate. Definitely. Okay, thank you, Jonathan, so much. Thank you. Total treat. <laughs>